me. This is the second major output from the Clarity IBD study that's been kicking about for about six weeks now as a preprint, um, as is very common for us to do these days. Um, but the full publication came onto um, the GUT website um, in the last week that's now fully published and free access to see. So first question here, what is the impact of infliximab on the immune response to COVID-19 vaccination? It's important to recognize here that we're measuring a different antibody here. We're measuring the anti-SARS-CoV-2 spike antibody. So this is different from the anti-nuclear capsid antibody that tells you if you've had uh, a naturally occurring SARS-CoV-2 infection. This is looking specifically at vaccination. In this data cut, we looked at 865 patients on infliximab, 428 on velizumab. Um, roughly half each had Pfizer-BioNTech, and roughly half each had the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine. So this is the most important result, and this is after one dose of vaccine. So if you've had one dose of vaccine um, and not had previous infection, this is what you see. And you see that patients on infliximab on the left here with Pfizer-BioNTech and patients on infliximab on the left here in green again on the Oxford-AstraZeneca have lower levels, this black line is the average or the median here, have lower levels than patients who are on vedolizumab with both um, vaccines. So if you're on vedolizumab with the Pfizer-BioNTech, you see the black line here, um, it's, sorry, it's in a good range, and here on the right with Oxford-AstraZeneca too, but if you're on infliximab, it is lower, okay? This blue line indicates the cutoff on this assay that confers protection in the tests that have been done. So if you try to understand what factors are associated with spike antibody concentration, um, and it's the same for both of the vaccines, so this just shows for all of them, you can see infliximab compared to vedolizumab being on an immune modulator, a subtle effect for Crohn's disease, um, um, an effect of being older, an effect of being a smoker, um, and actually if you're of non-white ethnicity, your protection was rather better. What percentage of patients develop protective antibodies against COVID? So this is similar to where we did it with natural infection. We, we looked first at the rates and then we looked at how many had seroconverted. So this is the percentage that are seropositive for the vaccination. And I'll just show you the left-hand set of panels here. This is for the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. <coughs> Excuse me. And you can see that patients on infliximab and azathioprine, or an, another immune modulator, 27.1%. It gets a bit better if you're on infliximab monotherapy. Vedolizumab um, with an immune modulator here, 55.6%. Vedolizumab monotherapy was the best out of all of them. And this was reflected in what we see with, um, with the Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccine. Now, so far, you might be thinking this doesn't look great, but actually there is a really important good news element to this story. And the important part to this is that if you've had two exposures to COVID antigen, that means if you've either had previous infection with COVID and one dose of vaccine, or if you've had two doses of vaccine, your protection is then complete and very good. So I want you to focus on this left hand of these four panels first. And you've got these three green lines which are for um, the infliximab group. And you can see, this is what we saw before, one dose with no prior infection, you're below this blue line. But if you've had one dose of prior infection, you're well above it, as you are if you've had two doses. And we see the same for, in this green, in the next panel across here for vedolizumab, but everything starts a bit higher. And then, um, importantly, we also see the same positive effect of the vaccine with the Oxford AstraZeneca. So here's the third panel along here, the second one in the green. You can see one dose, no prior infection. It's the same as what we saw with the Pfizer-BioNTech, but one dose with prior infection, you're much higher. And we now have data to support with two doses of Oxford AstraZeneca that shows the same effect. So patients on infliximab after one dose of either vaccine have lower levels, levels of protection with antibodies to COVID, but, and importantly, patients on infliximab have normal levels of protective antibodies if they've already had COVID and get one dose of vaccine, 
or if they've had two doses of vaccine. What medicines are affected? Well, we suspect this applies to all anti-TNF drugs. So for us, that means infliximab and adalimumab. And whilst we did not study it separately, we suspect there is also an effect here with patients who only take immune modulators. So if you're on azathioprine, mecaptopurine, or methotrexate as monotherapy by itself, there may also be um, a, a small effect after one dose. And we also suspect this also applies to people taking these medicines for non-IBD indications like inflammatory joint or skin disease. But, but again, we can't say for certain because we didn't study that specifically. I think this is the most important slide I want to show you tonight. I'm taking one of these medicines. What should I do? My most important message to you is not to be worried. Please keep taking your medicines, get vaccinated at the earliest possible opportunity, and I strongly believe you should take whatever vaccine that you're offered, um, that, that they all show a very good effect with a very low risk. After one vaccine dose, everyone in society should continue to socially distance. I believe that, but I think that's particularly true for patients um, who are, um, are on one of these medicines. And as Gil and Eric have said, we would try to get priority for the second vaccine dose.